To begin, find a large piece of sanded wood. After you've found a piece of wood, trace the design onto it, take it to the construction room, and cut it out on the bandsaw. Here's our finished flower that we have decided to paint pink. Once you've got the shape of your base, cut your dowels to length and cut out the crossbeam. Drill five holes in the crossbeam in the base to insert the dowels in the axle into. To assemble it, you put the four dowels into the four holes you previously drilled and then attach the crossbeam. Here we have our fully assembled base and our 15 inch knitting needle, which will act as an axle. This just gets placed in the top hole. Here we are cutting out a pop bottle in half to demonstrate how we made our wind turbine. We trace the two halves of the bottles we cut previously onto a piece of wood and we cut out this design to glue the bottles on. Also, there's a hole in the middle to support the axle. We then painted one side to match the bottles. Now we're going to trace the bottles along the cut wood to know where we're going to place the glue. We are now going to attach the bottles to the wood by gluing along the trace line. Here is our finished wind turbine. Here we have four rare earth magnets and one CD. We're going to glue them equal distance apart, arranging them with opposite polarities beside each other. Here's our finished CD. After you finish gluing the magnets on, give it a bit of time to dry, and then glue the CD to the bottom of your wind turbine. After attaching the wood supports to make the turbine, thread the knitting needle through the top of the crossbeam and through the two wood supports. We are now going to test that our fan works by blowing the hair dryer at it. We have three identical iron bolts and a spool of magnet wire. We are now going to wind our iron screw with the magnet wire using a drill. Make sure the other end of the magnet wire is sticking out. We are using a drill to speed up the process and make sure we get very tight winds. We have stuck the end of the screw in the drill, causing it to spin, and attached the wire to the screw. So as the drill spins the screw, the wire will be wrapped around the screw. We're now going to detach the screw from the drill. We're also going to cut the other end of the wire so we have two ends sticking out. Here are our three folds with magnetic wire wrapped around them to create our three solenoids. We have attached the solenoids together by twisting the stripped ends of the wire. Now we are testing the continuity of our bolts with a multimeter to make sure they are all attached in a series circuit. The free ends of the wire have been stripped and are being held to the multimeter's prongs. We have placed the wrapped iron screws under the magnets on the CD. Here we are testing the voltage produced by our generator using a multimeter. As you can see, when the wind turbine spins, it produces a small amount of electricity. Here's how it works from a physics perspective. A loop of wire wrapped around a ferromagnetic material creates a magnetic field. If you add more loops, it creates a larger magnetic field. Lenz's law states that a current will be induced in a coil of wires such that the current will establish a magnetic field to oppose the change in the external magnetic field. As a magnet goes towards a solenoid, the solenoid will establish a magnetic field to oppose the change in the density of the magnetic field. So, if the north pole of a magnet goes towards a solenoid, it will establish a north pole to repel and resist the change in density of the external magnetic field. If the north pole of a magnet moves away from a solenoid, it will establish a south pole to attract the magnet and resist the change in the density of that external magnetic field. The wind turbine causes the magnets to be spinning continuously over three solenoids, causing the magnetic field of the coils of the wires to be constantly changing. Faraday's law states that change in magnetic field creates induced current in a coil of wires. The kind of current created here is alternating current, because the electrons are traveling in alternate directions as the different poles of the magnets pass over each coil. Our generator has been modeled based on the design of a wind turbine. Both generators use wind as their main source of energy. 
In a wind turbine, the wind turns the large blades, which spins a shaft. This shaft is connected to gears that interlock with a generator that generates electricity. The generator in the wind turbine uses the wind energy supplied to it to force the movement of electric charges present in the wire of its windings through an external electric circuit. The flow of electric charges constitutes the output electric current supplied by the generator. Wind turbines are a much more sustainable source of energy and should be used over fossil fuels.